Welcome back to the GSL. I'm Tasteless. And with me is Artosis. We're the casting archon. We love StarCraft 2. And we love you guys and girls out there who want to join us uh, in this nerdy, awesome game that is an eSport. We have been... Uh, StarCraft is manly. It's manly. It's, it's nerdy manly. All right. Of I'll course. take that. But it is a it's manly, manly game. nerdly, and baller. Absolutely. And uh, we already saw our first game, which I think was pretty... You know, straightforward. Uh, it in, was like in the interview. I did have a chance to ask his thought process, and is exactly what we called. You know, he he wants to play this really safe game. He's played bonbons before, and he knew his style. Wanted, he knew he liked all ins and stuff. So he played a very safe three rack style. So he has enough units to stop anything that comes at him. So pretty standard, pretty, clean, yeah. pretty straight up. Sometimes uh, when you're better than your opponent, you might as well not take any risks. Yeah, don't expand. And, yeah, because <laughs> yeah. You're probably yep, less so likely to make mistakes and, and stuff like that. Absolutely. Um, so, enough about that match. Uh, let's talk about our next one. We have Anyang Prime. Anyang is Korean, the casual way to say hello. Yep. Against <laughs> Choya Foyu. Yep. Now, <clears throat> Choya Foyu, remember that last part of the name, Foyu. That's uh, <laughs> probably one of the best teams in Korea right now, but actually we're getting a shot of Anyang first. So we'll talk about Prime. Prime, one of these teams dominating more in GSL Season 1 than Season 3. Not yeah. very many Primes left. No, no. We might get down to a Prime number pretty soon, Tasteless, of just one or so. Because they're getting knocked out a lot by Foyu players. Yeah, that's true. Foyu, um, I think, has the most presence out of any team here in the GSL. Foyu was, like, barely existent um, yeah. in Season 2. And all of a sudden, all these StarCraft 1 uh, badasses decided to switch over to StarCraft 2, and they are shaking up the scene. So there's a lot of pressure here on Enyong Prime to try to get him, uh, you know, a little bit of a... Well, get the team a little bit of attention over here in the round of 32. That's right. Prime. Oh, and there's Edison. Edison from China. Yep, he is the manager of Loner and Luffy from Wii. And Loner is now uh, training on Team Prime. Yeah, he's Prime, a correct. member of Wii, and they're uh, kind of working together with Prime. So right. Loner and Luffy going to be in GSL for quite some time. There's there is Choya. Uh, Foyu. A very good player from Foyu. Uh, he was the most known Foyu last season, I do believe. Right. A Quite a good Protoss. So this is going to be pretty hard for Anyang. Uh, yeah, it, I, I think so, absolutely. I have actually seen Anyang's uh, Zerg versus Protoss. I saw him playing versus EG in control a little bit. And... Um, I don't know, if Choya has PvZ that good, then Enyong is going to be in trouble. But I haven't actually played against Choya in quite a while, so hard to right. put my finger on exactly how good his Protoss for Zerg is right now. Right, right. Thing is, he is on Foyu, and that team is absolutely sick baller, nasty, crazy good. Yeah, I mean, we weren't talking, we were talking of TSL um, and, and ST a little bit more, and IM, but all of a sudden, uh, Foyu, every single one of their players is so good, and they're bashing all these guys that were yeah. dominated in season one and two. So, uh, I don't know if they're all going to make it to the, through the round of 32 here, but I, if we see any pattern with people that have Foyu in their name yeah. and winning games, uh, then Choya is definitely the favorite in this series. Yeah, Foyu is really dominating this season. We're going to have right. to see how far they do get. I wouldn't be surprised if we have like 80% Foyu left at the end. Um, they're sick, man. Like yeah. Every player is so solid. Even some of them even opened up quite poorly, and then we're like, "Oh wait, now he's good again." Yeah, it's uh. So let's uh, pull the map lineup for a second. Yeah. Uh, on our screen here, Jungle Basin, <laughs> Metalopolis, Shakuras Plateau. Ah, now Anyang is going to be pretty happy with this. Jungle Basin can be a very hard map for Zerg versus Protoss, but Metalopolis and Shakuras Plateau are exactly the maps that a Zerg would want to play against Protoss on. So, yeah. uh, Choya, he may have a pretty hard time after that first set. In fact, if he doesn't win that first set, uh, I'm going to say it's going to be extremely hard for him to come back. Yeah, I think so. Jungle Basin, of course, the problem with that is you're expanding towards your opponent. So, Protoss can mass up a lot of uh, units, sentries, and Colossus, Colossi, and, uh, you know, just kind of jab you uh, at your expansions, mm. and it's very tough. The longer the game goes on, usually the harder it is for Zerg. So we'll see what happens. Some of these Zergs really focus on Mutalisks if the Protoss tries to fast expand. Um, but you never know. In PvZ, there's a lot of different things you can do 
we've seen, I think, the shortest games and, um, you know, the most diverse games out of any yeah. matchup with this, uh, with, with these two races clashing together. And, you know, PVZ, I think, is one of these matchups we've seen so far in the GSL that I think some of the worst games we've seen have been them just because one player is, like, totally out there not knowing what he's doing. Yeah, I think you're right. Well, the countdown started. Uh, let's see who's going to win. Ang Young or Choya, Prime or Foyu. It's going to start now. Okay, in the red. Up here at the top left. Down here in the blue. Remember, Enyoung, one of the last prime players left. Now, down here in the blue, uh, getting on to point. This guy from a very dominating team right now. Choya Foyu. who, and I can't emphasize this enough, the, the, the Foyu team is actually becoming so scary right now that I would not be surprised if there's at least one of these guys in the final. Yeah, I would actually be surprised if we don't have a couple Foyu in the top four, to be yeah. perfectly honest with you. that Some of the best players we've seen so far. And the thing is, not just one of them stands out. Uh, they all have been just playing so solid. A really ghost of StarCraft 1 team. Yeah. A really top-end StarCraft 1 clan. And they have transferred over brilliantly. We follow the probe. All the way over here, into N Young's base. Very quick probe, checking for pool, sees no pool. Okay, block the hatchery, there we go. So now, the Zerg, since he saved up his minerals, actually, he was going to make a hatchery over here, we just saw the building. He's gonna make a spawning pool over here, but I think he might try to fake it as if he's going to expand right here. Protoss nice. is not a trick though. Protoss is actually completely ready to let him take that, but that, uh, the pool does go up. Yep. Figures it's a scout, uh, fast scout. Is all pool first. Want to be safe? Thank you, and Young Prime. Now, Protoss, it does seem, is going to go for a Nexus first. Now, I have to admit, uh, this seems very risky. Well, actually, I mean, yeah, that's what I thought as well. Wait, now, would this you is, wall it up with a gateway while the cannons make it? You do throw a gateway up, but uh, actually, in control, does this build on this map? He practices a lot against Idra at my house, and um, it works. It actually, the timings work out on this map, where even if they pull first, you can go for your nexus first and still have your defenses up in time. Wow, that you are safe. That's why he went scout on a nine probe. So as you can see, the lanes are going to move out, and I guess you are correct, Artosis, or rather, yep. EG in control. His wisdom is right on. Yeah. You see the cannon it. will probably finish right as the Zerglings get here. Talk about a very tight and clean build order. Yeah, it's it's very tight, and, you know, it's almost a little bit scary how good it is. Yeah, uh, I mean... He's going to have this next sub ridiculously fast. In fact, it's almost done right now. No. Finishing <coughs> before the hatchery, even. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, now, he does have a pylon here, so we will notice this is under attack. Yep. Looks like um, Enyong knows that uh, he can't get through this way, so he's going to attack the rocks back here. That'll at least force another cannon to be made here. Meanwhile, the Zerg is going to crank out a ton of drones. Yeah, you know, that's what you have to do with those Zerglings. If you make so many Zerglings early on, pressure those rocks, make him make the cannon. And you may as well damage them anyways, because later on you might be able to use that to your advantage with maybe some speedling counterattacks, some run buys, that type of thing. That's true. I mean, those rocks don't heal themselves. It's already at half health. This cannon will just barely get done in time. But you get a few roaches over here later on where the yeah. cannon can't reach. And yeah. Absolutely. He's going to have to have something else to defend by then. So we're going to just do get chased off. Now, I'm really excited to see what he's going to tech to from here. Uh, of course, he's going to throw up a very quick cybernetics core. And in fact, Tasteless, that cybernetics core makes a, a solid wall in. Yeah. Now, this means that he's probably going to kill out those back rocks, 
and take his third base on the left side of the map when it is time for that. Yeah, I think but you're right. Also, this means he's probably going to go ahead and tech up. Look at this. A Zealot, though. Let's talk about this. Going into the Zerg main. Going to force him to get some Zerglings back there. Killing a drone. Oh, man. When you can just send a Zealot out and kill two drones, it's more than worth it. But it looks like it might just be one drone. Whoa, hold on. Hold on. No. Doesn't get it. Yeah. So, uh... As I was saying, you know, if you do wall in completely like that, I think we're going to see the double Stargate tech. And, well, he's already got one Stargate up, but I would not be surprised at all if we do see another one. Uh, this is just because he is going to be so unit light. Yeah, I think you're totally right. Now, Roach Warren going up. This is why right now on the Korean server, it's getting more and more popular, especially since Guinea Pig Blade, where you see a lot of star ports being made. Uh, it... Counters the Roach very well. Forces them into Hydra. And of course, when you get Hydra, then you can switch into Colossus or Mass Stalker. Yeah, that's quite right. The uh, Colossus switch is so powerful against Hydra. Very cost effective. Very deadly. Yep. Now, back at the Protoss base, we notice he is going to go for just one Stargate, but Chrono boosting out that Void, void Ray. Ray going to be able to clean up overlords, maybe force hydras because he doesn't know how many he's going to make, you know, harass the queens a little bit. I doubt he'll get a kill, but uh, still, it's quite a useful unit to have floating around. It's kind of like the, you know, the one banshee that we see a lot now in TVZ. Right, and you can push these overlords away. Yeah. Eventually, the Zerg is supposed to sack one of these overlords into the Protoss' <coughs> base to figure out what's going on. Mm. He hasn't done that yet, but he really needs, should be doing that pretty soon here. Yeah, sometimes you wait for Overlord speed, but he is not getting it right now. In fact, he's making a lot of Zerglings. Zergling speed, Roach speed. He has some Roaches out. I think he's going to all in at the rocks of Choya. Yeah, you know what? I think you're completely right. He's sopping these rocks up. He is going to go for what looks like it could be an all in. That's right. The Void Ray is going to help out versus this, but it is in the wrong place on the map right now. The Void Ray, that's right, it's all the way up here. And Tasteless, this actually looks like it's going to be deadly. And Young with a very smart move here. Rodas has to survive this. And he busts it down. Doesn't oh, get a pile on there to block. A lot of speedlings in there just surrounding the Stalkers. Beautiful play here by An Young. And at home, he actually has quite a high economy. So this really isn't even all in. This is just a great move. And it's going to have to take that Void Ray to help clean up because he is losing a lot of probes right now. Luckily for him, though, he is warping in some Stalkers, getting some cannons up, taking the pressure off his probes. And this Void Ray can't really be touched. But the question is, can one Void Ray take on all these units? You see there's a second Void Ray on the way. That will certainly help. But there's going to be more units on the way as well to attack Tasteless. Here they are now. And he's, he's going to be able to snipe that Nexus, I do believe. That is not good for Choya. Choya can't be feeling good about this. Um, he's chrono boosting some probes out of there. He has cleaned up whatever's over here, or whatever was over there. I believe it was a few roaches. But he needs to get over here and take out the rest of these units oh, and man. save the Nexus. If he loses the Nexus, it could possibly cost him the game. Yeah, it definitely could. That'll get him the Zerg player way ahead, but I think he's going to actually kill the roaches. Oh, uh, my God. 63 health oh left on that God. Nexus. Unbelievable. That cannot feel good for An Young. Wow, that is actually <laughs> quite a turn of events. I just got chills, Tasteless. That was a really great defense. The Void Rays helped out so much there. Talk about a save. Sheesh. You know, and oh, really... Hold that thought, though. He's going to be moving around here. Trying to maybe dart in there and finish it off. He's going to wall it off with yep, pylons. Very not nice. Not going to work out. The double Void Rays right now looking pretty good. Uh, Spire about to finish, as you see there. And right now, this small air fleet is just dominating. Yeah, he's got nice map control with that. And uh, N Young is right now on two base versus two base, so probably not going to be too happy about that. If we take a look at the supplies, uh, suddenly leaving that Nexus alive, not very good. It's 81 supply for our Protoss, who lost a lot in that attack, against 86 for Zerg. Going to take out the Spore Crawler pretty easily. I think he might take out some Queens as well, lift one up. Go ahead and kill, but oh my god, that's a lot of Queens, Tasteless. That is a lot of Queens. Taking out that Phoenix. He's going to need to get out of there. 
before um, before anything bad happens to those Void Rays. We got an expansion though for the Zerg. Not the easiest place to defend, by the way. No, it's it's a pretty hard spot. He's gonna have to get his creep up there. He's gonna have to be very careful about where he engages any Protoss units. You got the Mutas out. Uh-oh, not good for this Phoenix. And he might be able to actually go back here. The main is actually undefended. He doesn't have any cannons there. Yeah, we do have uh, Blink being researched. And the Void Rays plus Phoenix trying to take out some Mutas. And they'll actually do a reasonable job killing a few Mutas there. Not too bad. But, uh, you know, right now... Uh, Cross is looking pretty, pretty solid. Ooh, that's looks, not good, though. Looks like he's going to take his third base now. Looks like these Phoenixes are rallied over yeah, here or something. Oops. Now, not, not the cheapest unit. you got to be no. careful with that. No, definitely not. Not sure if there's enough stalkers here to take this on. Mm, he's going to rely on Blink. You know, if he overcommits, just Blink away and right. get out of there. Because stalkers, they run pretty fast. I would say they can definitely outrun that army. Blink is one of those abilities. Now, is he actually going to blink into the main? I believe yeah, he will. Yeah, I think he's going to blink up there, see if he can't snipe something and get out. But got to be careful. Snipe the queen. You want to get out of here now. Oh, Zerglings around you. Get down there. There you go. Nice little harassment there. Now, you got to always be doing stuff like that when you do go blink stalkers. They already have another blink charge. Oh, the cooldown for the blink has ended. So now they can try to go back up here and do it again. He's attacking, blinking away. And a very good defense going up that ramp. He's got cannons up there as well. Not going to be broken. And Choya, you know, he's losing some units here and there. Some of uh, the attacks that Anyang are doing are doing a good job. But he's playing such a solid defensive game right now. It seems like it's going to be very hard for Anyang. Anyang is actually going to try to attack the entrance over here. This could cause a counterattack up here towards this expansion. And I think trying to find his place on the map. <laughs> Excuse me. Uh, Mutas trying to do a little bit of harassment. In the meantime, he is taking a fourth base over on the right side of the map. But uh, yeah, this Stalker Force is just going to grow and grow and grow. They've already got plus one attack. Plus two is on the way. Looks like we got a Nidus Worm. He could bring it in over here. Ooh, interesting. We haven't seen Zerg's go Nidus on this map really at all. Yeah. It's smart though because if they head towards you, you actually Nidus network into their base. Try to take out all their warp gates and the nexuses and stuff. Yeah, if you can uh, catch them off guard where they're not checking out that the edges of their base all the time, which happens a lot, man, no matter how good you are, you might be caught off guard with that in the late game. And even if you do catch it, you might not be able to kill it in time. Yeah. Let's see where this thing ends up. I think it's going to end up right there, Taze. I, I think, think so. you're exactly right. That would be a great place to actually put it. <coughs> now he has, okay, he's loading him up. He's going to go. Too many stalkers there. There is so many units in that. You know, one and trick. And he's bringing it over here. Ah, uh, all right. That's actually a really great location. He's not going to see that at all. Um, he will hear that sound effect, though. Yeah, he's going to be looking like a madman. Not going to know exactly where that is, though. Takes a while for this knight to unload that many units. <laughs> and he actually, I think, is just going to go for this expansion. Meanwhile, I don't know why he attacked on that side, by the way. And these Phoenix is going to be taken out. Got to be careful with those Phoenixes. A lot of stalkers right now. Blinking away. Pylon's doing a really good job of keeping the Roaches in a bit. And there we go. The flank by the Stalker army. Oh, this might actually end the Zerg. He's just trapped his army up there. Yeah, he could kill a lot of <laughs> units here. But, oh, good moves by the Zerg. Just hitting Stalkers when they do walk away. And Whoa. four queens. Blunder of the century. Wow, that, they all have full energy. Oh, my God. That is so embarrassing. I don't know how that happened. He must have just misclicked by accident. He does take out the Nexus, though. Wow, that was actually, that part was good. But suiciding those four queens, he's going to regret that when he realizes My, my bet is he doesn't even know that they're gone, yeah, too. Yeah, most likely. Where are and, these guys oh, going? Oh, wow, look at this. No queens to defend the hatches anymore. So uh, those zealots may do exactly what just happened to him. 
Oh, he's targeting the pylons there. These are actually two great moves at once. And there is an extra pylon. Immortal popping out. Roaches have to go away. But He's going to get this hatchery. Yeah, he definitely is. And he already took is, out this ooh, one. That is hurting the economy of our Zerg player on Young Prime. Pretty wild. And look at this, how close this game is. It's 136 supply to 135. Pretty amazingly close. This is all is still wreaking havoc. Yeah, no kidding. It's funny what a few zealots uh, left unnoticed can do to you. Now I think if the Protoss actually reassembles, he can go ahead and just attack this expansion over here. I mean, there are a lot of roaches, but actually that's a, that's a lot of roaches. That is. But, uh, you know, right now he is popping out a bunch of immortal yeah. blink stalkers. He does have that plus two attack, so the immortal is going to be even more deadly than normal against the roaches. Uh, yeah, it's... It's looking pretty good for Choya, I would have to say. I think so. Only one location with minerals. He has to defend it. It's very difficult to, you know, cover in the spot. Phoenix is on the map. Just uh, taking Overlords out here and there. Yep. And not a position he should be attacking oh, at. That is not a place you want to attack into right there. Cannons galore. Stalkers with blink. Sentries with Forest Field, and of course Immortals to deal sick damage to anything armored. And we do have a counterattack to the front. You should get the Forge up. Yeah, he has to get that Forest Field. There we go. Very, very nice. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh-oh, he's just going to try to come around here and trap him. Nice flank right here. And those Immortals doing sick damage. Probably Blinking not, right on top of the road. Probably not a good idea to blink on top of the road. Yeah. That should deal more damage to you. But GG. GG. And Young just got too far behind there, but a really good game by both players. Wow. I'm happy with that game, Tazel. Yeah, that was a pretty good game, pretty yeah, educational. Yeah. They Choya both played Foyer, very well. Very strong. Now, Choya, he was actually on the brink a couple times, held on tight, and played a solid game. But An Young, for playing on jungle base, and he did a really good job. He's very aggressive. I love that Nidus. That's something I think Zerg should use a lot more on that map. Yeah, I think you know, so. No one ever really looks at that little passageway yeah. back there because that's like such an unimportant part of the map, but that's a perfect place to Nidus. It's nice. Uh, I thought he was going to do it at the, the location next to the Nexus. I was wrong. Actually, yeah. The other spot was much better. Um, wow. Okay, well, we're going to go on to the next map. I believe that's what? Uh, Metalopolis. And Metalopolis is a map that's going to be better for Anyong. Uh, in this case, especially if he spawns far away from him. Close proximity might be a different story, but uh, in this case, maybe we're going to see Anyoung do a little bit better. I thought he did a pretty good job considering, um, you know, the circumstances of that map. Yeah. I, nothing to add to that, absolutely. I did it. I covered did everything. It. You solved it. Hey, I so solved it. You solved that game. I Thank you. I solved it. Yeah, no problem. No problem. Um, guys, it's so fun to be here with you. Uh, sharing my nerd passion, my manly nerd baller passion. There you go. There you go. Didn't there want to have to crack you again, Tasis. <laughs> um, we have a little bit more uh, time before this game starts. Our Korean commentator's got to wrap it up. Metalopolis is a map that Zerk and Macro on. They're going to hug the corners of the map, mm -hmm. stay away from the Protoss, and um, they don't have to expand necessarily towards the Protoss, which makes things a little bit easier. The countdown has started, so let's get ready. Uh, for some more PVZ action here at the GSL. Choya against Enyoung. Prime against uh, Bowyu. <laughs> 